The North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has been busy since the country started its first major battle against a COVID-19 outbreak in May. He's personally inspected pharmacies in Pyongyang. Kim visited the country's headquarters for epidemic prevention, and he's held numerous meetings where he berated officials for failing to prevent the public health crisis. Pyongyang officially announced its first locally transmitted case more than two years into the pandemic. And since then, hundreds of thousands of what North Korea calls fever cases have been reported daily. This really eye-opening that Kim Jong-un would say it's the worst crisis since the foundation of the country. Examining Kim's recent pandemic policies and public service announcements helped to understand what resources are available in the country, as well as what's lacking, as the regime attempts to stamp out the virus. In the early days of the pandemic, North Korea closed its borders, including a shoot-on-site order for people attempting to cross it. And it worked to keep the virus at bay. But now, with the surge in cases fueled by the fast-spreading Omicron variant, the country is taking new measures. The message sort of be to convince people that the leadership uh, is working very hard for them. One of the first acts was to order the lockdown of major cities. Still, Pyongyang has reported more than 60 deaths and over 3 million fever cases case of fever, that's essentially a euphemism for coronavirus. They have very limited testing capacity. The World Health Organization has said since the start of the pandemic, North Korea has tested about 64,000 people. That works out at less than 100 a day. The lack of testing capacity is one of the major challenges in the country's battle against the virus. If you're trying to do a lockdown strategy, you know, you need to be testing people as well to be able to tell when it's safe for people to come out. With mass testing not an option, the leader has looked for other measures to tackle the crisis. Kim has mobilized the military to help ensure basic medical supplies are available in the capital city where the first cases were reported. Crews donning hazmat suits have been disinfecting streets, factories, and stores. People in Pyongyang have been encouraged to wear masks. We've even seen you know, Kim Jong-un himself wearing two masks. But we did go to the border area between South Korea and North Korea. We could see people walking around on the North Korean side who were not wearing masks. So the uh, presence of masks seems to be not uh, complete across the country, at least. Um, perhaps, you know, the availability of masks is, is one reason for that. Kim's actions have also been accompanied by public health segments on state television. In this segment, a presenter explained how to take painkillers like paracetamol for fevers. To our knowledge, they don't have supplies of antiviral medicines which treat uh, COVID. What they're looking at to treat these things are sort of basic medicines. But if someone's got uh, severe breathing difficulties, it's obviously not sufficient. Another segment advised viewers to wash hands regularly, nurses to wear masks, and that those with fever should isolate. But one of the most effective ways to combat the virus has been missing from these public service announcements and other COVID policies, and that's to get vaccinated. That's because there's no known vaccines available in North Korea, and the country has also rejected doses from the World Health Organization and South Korea. But recently, it's reached out to one of its closest allies for help. There have been flights by North Korean cargo planes from China bringing in medical supplies quite secretly, actually. They haven't announced this. I don't think they want to let their people know that they are relying on another country uh, to provide supplies. Health experts say that without vaccines and testing capacity, North Korea risks being overwhelmed by a health crisis not seen since the country suffered a famine that killed over a million people in the 1990s. The population is particularly vulnerable because of widespread malnutrition and the decrepit state of the country's medical system. In rural areas, hospitals are reported to lack supplies, and some even operate without electricity. If the uh, provinces and rural areas, you know, are more badly affected, which is where we see more malnutrition, I would say that this is probably not going to trouble the regime too much because this is something that we saw in the past during the famine of the 1990s. But if the casualty rate is very high in the capital in Pyongyang, that's potentially destabilizing because that's where the leadership relies on the people for their support in order to keep the Kim family, Kim Jong-un specifically, in power. But the pandemic isn't the only big task on Kim's plate. As he enters the second decade of his rule, the regime faces sanctions that have battered the country's economy and it continues to move aggressively forward with frequent weapons tests. Those things require a large amount of attention from 
the leadership. Can they multitask? That's a big question. 